right, gang, welcome back. Part one of how to find a job here. Part one of the how to write a resume series. So let's start off with what is a resume, okay? A resume is just a summary of you or your experience at a glance. It is a way to have a one page document so that I can get to know you real quickly without asking you, you know, two hours worth of questions. You're going to tell me about your education, about your work experience, about um, leadership experience, all this kind of stuff in one page very quickly, okay? So there have been a lot of studies done on recruiters, then they've actually got an eye tracking uh, software that when they give them a resume, they look specifically at a recruiter's eye and see exactly what they're looking at on the page. And a recruiter typically is going to scan your resume for five to eight seconds, from five to eight seconds. So you need to make sure that your resume is well organized, that your headings are nice and bold. It's easy laid out. It's not too jumbled. It's not too crowded. And it's easy for your eye to pick up on things and get that information very quickly. Okay. So that's kind of the goal of the resume. So what we're going to do in this series is we're going to start at the top. Now, this is an engineering resume, okay? If you're an art major or a business major, your resume may look different than this, okay? But for engineers, and I have lots and lots of experience with this, it needs to kind of look a certain way. It's professional, but it's it's scientific, right? We don't have a bunch of floof in there. It's It just is about the details, and that's it, okay? So I'm going to start at the top and I'm going to give you uh, what I think. Now, this is all my opinion here, but what the top of it should look like. And then and then we'll do another video with the next section, another video with the next section. And by the end of this, you should be able to go and create your own resume from your experience from this. And I'll also uh, have some example resumes that I'll throw in the, uh, in the video as well. So let's talk about your resume you're starting with a blank piece of paper where do i start okay very top of the page your name your whole name okay so your name so at the top of your resume you should have your name okay so we'll just write a name up here bob johnson okay and you want to use, on your resume, you want to use some kind of serif font. And my recommendation is you should use either Times New Roman. That's my favorite. Or something like Cambria. Okay? Stay away from informal fonts like Arial. Don't, don't use those. They're, too, they're square. This is a little more formal and looks a little bit better on a resume, okay? And as far as your name, if, the, if a recruiter takes resumes, right, and they've got a stack of 20, 30, 40, 50 resumes, and they're gonna take back to the office, and you wanna be able to remember you, you don't wanna be a tiny little name at the top of the page. You want a name that's big enough um, that they can, they can flip through the stack and find you easily, right? So you want it to stand out, your name. So I would say you need to be in a, something like a 20-point font, to a 24 point font, okay? No bigger than 24. If you don't have a whole lot of stuff on your resume, you can put a 24 point font on there. Um, if your resume is kind of full, a 20 point font. And remember on resumes, the margins aren't as important as they are on an English paper, okay? You can fill the whole page side to side. You can have smaller margins, smaller margin at the top as well, okay? The, when I get a resume, if somebody hands me a resume and it has giant margins and double space between everything and lots of spaces, in my mind, before I even read a word on the page, I'm thinking, there's not very much on this resume, right? So the resume ought to be filled up. It needs to be side to side, top to bottom. It needs to be full of organized inf information so that just the appearance of your resume is like, wow, I need to read this because this person has a lot of stuff on here. I need to see this might be the person here, right? So just that, that, um, just that first appearance, that, that uh, first inclination that you get from looking at something is important. So you need to be thinking about that. If you've got a ton of white space on your resume throughout, you need to fill that up because to me, as soon as I look at that, I'm like, oh, this looks empty. They must not have done anything, right? So uh, it's a perception deal. So you be, be, be watching for that, okay? 
So name at the top of the paper. That should be an easy one for you to do. Can you handle it? Okay. Under that would be your uh, address. Okay, so your address. Okay, your address, if you center your name, I like a centered name on the paper, then this should be centered under that as well. It should be the very next line. Your address should be the very next line. And the address that you should use should be your permanent address. Okay, I know what you're thinking. I don't have a permanent address. I'm homeless right now, right? Yeah, I know. But don't put like, you know, Bob's dorm room. Because if you put that on there and somebody wants to call you, uh, at the end of the summer and you don't live in the dorm room anymore, don't put that on there. So put something like your parents' address on there, um, something where if somebody sends you something in the mail, uh, that it can still find you. So a permanent address. What you don't want is your resume to completely be changing every nine months when you get a new apartment or you move on to whatever, right? You want to have some kind of permanent address on your um, resume, okay? In addition, to your permanent address is something that's maybe even more important than that, and that would be your phone number, okay? And it's okay to have your cell number there. That's almost all of us have anymore anyway. We don't have a, you know, landline. And your email address, okay? I keep misspelling address there. Your email address, and you need to have some kind of permanent email address as well. Now, you don't need to have Johnny at hotstuff.com, okay? That's not a good professional email. So you need to have your a professional email address. You can go to Gmail and get a permanent email that you'll have from now on. Um, or your university email address is, is good here too um, because that address should be good for the four or five or six or seven or eight years that you're at university. So that, that would be good as well. Um, for you to have but that goes on that next line under your name okay so the next thing we're going to talk about is probably one of the most controversial things on resume and if you ask 10 people you may get 10 different answers maybe you'll get two different answers put it on there don't put it on there and that is the objective okay so do i put an objective on my resume my answer no, you do not put an objective on your resume. If I, if you give me your resume, it is going to have your educational credentials on there. And if it tells me that you graduate in two years, I, as a recruiter, am like, oh, he's not looking for a full-time job right now. They're looking for something else, for maybe an internship or a co-op. If it says I graduate this coming May, hey, I know they're looking for a full-time job. Don't put an objective on there to obtain a rewarding job in a rewarding field where I can put my immense skills to blah, 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 okay? That does not do anything for you. I say leave this off. I say there's only one case where you should put an objective on your resume, okay? And that is when you are laser focused on a specific job. Let's say that you apply to NASA, right? And you looked on NASA's website and they had a G38 spot available in flight programming and, you know, and that is the exact job that I want, right? Then you can put on your objective to get job number T38 and the whatever, blah, 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 right? That is exactly what I want, right? But if you just want to go to work for a company or you just want to make a generic resume that you can hand out to anybody, this it's left off. Do not put an objective on there. Number one, it's corny. Number two, it doesn't tell me anything about you and it takes up space on your resume that you could do more with. You could tell me more about your experience or about activities that you're involved in or about your education versus taking up room on your uh, resume with this. This is just fluff and I think most recruiters would agree with me that you just need to leave the objective off, okay? Unless there is a laser-focused job that I just want to go get that particular thing. That's the only time I would recommend that you use a, an objective. Other than that, delete it, okay? Okay, and the final thing for this video, I want to talk to you about the kind of the first main bullet point that you'll have on your uh, resume after your name and your address, of course. It's going to be this. And this goes to the, the top thing, education. Okay. Now, what I like 
I don't know about everybody else, but I like to have a line across the page that delineates this section from this section. When I get to the next thing, which will be in my work experience, I'll have another line across the page that delineates my work experience from this. Again, that makes my eyeball go real quick to those sections. It's very easy to identify those different sections and uh, see where I need to go to the next thing in my resume. So I like this education. It's bold. This is bold. And this is something like 12 point here, okay? And if you're, and if you're, uh, you have a ton of stuff on your resume, you may go to 11 point, right? But you, you know, you, you, when you get down to 10 point, you're starting to get so small and so much stuff on there that I have to spend too much time on your resume to read it. So pretty much you want to stick with 12 point font on all of this, on, on all the rest of your resume from here on down. The only thing that you don't want in that big, uh, the, that size font of course is your name okay so these are bold and then underneath that you're gonna have your education now what's not in your education no high school education okay everybody that's in college has completed high school and we're all fighting for the same job there's no high school education included on this okay matter of fact there's no information from high school gonna be on this resume okay we're just gonna leave that off so the first thing you're gonna have is your university Okay, and then after that, comma, the location, right? Where is that university? And you may do something like this. Now, what you want to do is be consistent with your formatting through your whole resume. So anytime I list something, maybe that's bold. Anytime I list a location, maybe that's italics, right? I think this looks pretty good in italics. So if I go to work for... Bob Sewer Company in Dallas, Texas, then that then I'm going to put that in italics, okay? And then uh, beyond that, what you're going to do is you're going to put underneath that your area of study, philosophy, mechanical engineering, same thing, right? Um, so put your degree next, okay? And then underneath that, you want to put something like um, your minors. Are you... If you're doing mechanical engineering, you're probably getting a math minor, right? So I might put that down here. Okay. Uh, if I did a study abroad, right, I can put that down here. Um, study abroad. Okay. But this shouldn't take up more than one line. So that your whole study abroad information, you know, studied math in Italy or whatever you want to put on there. Uh, it shouldn't take up more than one line. So th this, that's about all that you want in your education are these things right here. So unless you have a master's degree or a PhD or something like that where this is going to be uh, really expanded, that's about all the information you want to put in here. Now, here's what you got to put in here. You got to put this in here. GPA, okay? You got to put your GPA in there. But I have a 2.6. I know. It's not good, right? But, in, but you know, most recruiters are looking for a 3-0 or up. That's why we, last video we talked about grades are so important, okay? So, but you got to put it in there because if you don't put it in there, what am I thinking? He's trying to hide something from you. you got a bad GPA and you're trying to hide something from you, aren't you? Okay? Also, I've seen this before. What if I have a 2.998? Can I put a 3.0? No, you cannot, okay? Your, your GPA needs to go to two decimal places because if you have a 2998, I know engineers were saying that's a 3.0. If you put 3.0 on there, and this is the only one that I would say that, it's the difference between a 3.0 and a 2998 or somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, if Because a lot of recruiters, what they, they're doing these days is they're going over and they're pulling your transcript. And if, if a 3.0 is their cutoff, and you said you had a 3.0 and they pull your transcript and you have a 2998, then they think this guy's not trustworthy. This, this girl's not trustworthy. And so you just lost all your credibility. It is better to be honest here, and I know that this is silly, but it's right on the it's right on the borderline. But this one instance right here, you've got to put your actual GPA on there. So if you have a 299, you got to put a 299. You can't put a 3.0, okay? And then the last thing you want to put on here are the dates, okay? So when did you study abroad? Maybe you did it August 
2019, something like that, right? Uh, and then for the main, for your main study, what are you going to put over here? Expected grad uh, 2021, or, or you could say fall 2021, right? Or whatever it is. That tells me as a recruiter exactly what you're looking for. Oh, this person's looking for a co-op. This one's looking for an intern. This one's looking for a full-time job. So I need to know what your expected graduation date is, and that should be on your... And so what I like here is that all the way down your resume, you're going to have this column over here of dates. It's very organized, right? Also, if you took some classes at junior college, let's say, right, and you're transferred into your university, you could put that down here as well as a second university that you studied at, right? Because your GPA, you know, you'll have a GPA from that other transfer university. So you can put your transfer university on there as well. And sometimes this, this, this GPA may be not so good and your transfer GPA is really good. So it's good to put a good GPA on there. You still have to put this GPA, don't get me wrong. But uh, it's good to put uh, maybe another one on there to, to make it look better. Like all I took at this university was hard classes. And at that university, I took classes that weren't, I did better at. They weren't quite so hard, so difficult. So, so I've got, this is the education section of your paper. So here is an example of what that should look like kind of typed up and, and, uh, and printed out for you. So this example here shows you. Uh, exactly what we just discussed and what it should kind of look like, okay? So, on the next video, we're going to move on to the next one, and it's going to be a biggie because it's kind of the meat of your resume. It's probably the highlight of your whole resume, and that is the, ex the experience section. So, come back for part two, and we'll talk about uh, the experience section of your resume and how to write that.